we're going to talk about brooding your own chicks. Now, some people come by the farm a couple times a year asking for adult chickens. This is fine if you don't have chickens, but if you already have chickens, you don't want to mix adults with adults. That's a bad thing to do. Um, so we're going to talk about brooding and how we do it here. Now, these chicks are about four weeks old. They came um, in a box through the mail, like mo almost all of our chicks do. And they really stay small for the first couple of weeks, and then about week three, they start eating and drinking like crazy, and they grow rapidly, so they're getting pretty big. Now, the best time to brood is generally in the spring, because that's when the weather is the mildest, and they can, you know, have a nice warm brooder, and then when they're introduced to the, to, to the coops, um, it's nice and warm in the summer already. Hello, chicken. You want a friend? Hello, chicken. You want another friend? Okay, the first step in a building a brooder is building the brooder. Now, this brooder can hold up to about 50 chickens. I know it looks really big. Fly! Um, but when these guys get bigger, it's going to get kind of cramped in here. There's about 53 ch uh, chicks in here right now. Now, th there are three things that make up a brooder, three primary things, not including the chickens. One is the draft shield. As you can see, we have a cardboard draft shield. That's what we usually made out of in the most small brooders that goes all the way around and goes up, you want it to be about two feet high, and that keeps the drafts from getting to the chickens. Uh, if you notice, there are no sharp corners in the draft shield, and that's really important, because when they get scared, as you can see now, I don't usually sit in the brooder with them, at least not often, um, they pile up, and they'll pile up several layers on top of each other, and if you give them corners, they'll suffocate the bottom layers, and that's, uh, that's not a pretty sight. Seen that plenty of times in other situations. Okay, number two, heat source. This is the kind of regular heat lamp that, ah, you get, you know, they, they heat up your junk uh, fast food with Burger King and whatnot. Hello. I like to chase chickens. And the last thing is food and water are critical. Um, now, if you look at the books and the catalogs, they'll try and sell you all these special chick feeders and all these things and say you have to use them. We used them the first couple of years, and now they litter the floor of the barn because they're really useless. Um, you know, a regular water font will do. You can use the, this is a one gallon, you can use a five gallon. Uh, a regular feeder will do. Hanging feeders are good. As long as it, you can get it low enough for the chicks to get in there, that's fine. If you get your chicks from a feed store or your local hardware store, you can skip this step. But if you're getting them in the mail and they're day old hatchlings, uh, this is something you need to do. First step is you coat the entire bottom with white paper or newspaper or anything like that. Then you take some uh, feed and just sprinkle it on. And the reason you do this is when they're just newborn, they don't know the difference between a wood shaving and some feed, so you got to kind of educate them on that. Then when you get your chicks in a box like this, you take each one out. They're going to be smaller than this. And you take their beak and you shove it in the water. Just dip it in the water so they learn how to drink. Because remember, these chicks were just born two days ago and they've never had a drink in their life. So they need to be educated on how to do that and where it is. Otherwise, they've been in the mail for two days and they're already in bad shape and dehydrated. All right, then you leave it like this. Hello. And they'll, you know, eat and poop on the water. You might need, on the paper, you might need to put down some extra paper and, uh, you know, just keep scattering fruit on it. And you do that for three days. And then after three days, you can lift up the, the paper and put down wood shavings. As your chicks get bigger, there's a couple things you want to do. You don't want to leave the food and water sitting on the floor because they'll climb in it, they'll poop in it, they'll get it full of shavings. So what we do is we make this a hanging, uh, we use a hanging feeder, and we just you know, hang it higher as the days goes on. You want to adjust the point where they can reach it with their beaks. Now with the water, we don't have a hanging water feeder, but if you look, we've got bricks. And we just keep putting bricks on it until it gets higher and higher because they will, they, they love to go swimming and uh, get the thing full of poo. Now, the key to a coop or a brooder or anything on the chicken farm is moisture and how much moisture is here. Moisture is your enemy. And, you know, once you put your shavings in, keep an eye on it. Uh, it you don't want to the, let them get too moist because uh, that will lead to, you know, bacteria and all sorts of nasty stuff. Now, obviously, it's not too moist in here because I'm sitting here and my pants are not wet. I can pick this bedding up and it's still pretty dry. Now, if it gets any wetter, Look, Ma, no poo. Actually, there's a little bit there. Any wetter, I'm going to want to put some more shavings in here, which this will probably need it in a day or two. Now, you want to keep the heat under the light at around 90 to 95 degrees. Now, you can do that with the temperature and go all kinds of crazy, but the smartest thing we found is let the chickens tell you if they're warm or not. 
Um, if they're cold, they're going to bunch into a, a glob right under the light and just be like a circle under it. If they're hot, they're going to move away and they're going to be like a huge donut all around the light. Now, depending on the size of your coop, you've got to be careful. A big coop like this, they can go anywhere they want. If they're hot, they can go over there and get cool. But if you have a smaller brooder, then you really have to watch the, the light because they can't get away and they could cook, basically. We've got a few kind of birds in here this year. We're doing a mixture of Araucanas and uh, Rhode Island Reds. This is a uh, Rhode Island Red. This guy is an Araucana. You can tell by the, whoops, the, uh, the spots on his back. And uh, this is also an Araucana, pure white. We name all of them Gwendolyn, just as a, a farm rule. Now you want to keep these guys in here for eight weeks. No more, no less. And here's why. You put them in too young, and the adult chickens are going to kill them. Put them in too old, and the adult chickens are going to kill them. We've learned this the hard way. Um, so eight weeks is really the sweet spot. Remember, now they'll be about three, about three or four times as big. So these guys are four weeks now, but they're going to grow a lot in the next four weeks, and they'll be almost full chicken size by then, right? You're going to be a big, big girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. This is our barn cat seven. She uh, does nothing good whatsoever. She just runs around and chases chickens. Now, once you hit the eight weeks, if these are your first chicks, you just move them to the coop and you're done. But if you have adult chicks, adults in the, in the coops already, you've got another problem to worry about, and that is what happens once you get them in there. There are a few things you need to do in your coop to uh, you know, keep the chicks as safe as possible. Let's go take a look. Okay, this is one of the araucanas we brooded last year. So she's just about a year old, a year and four weeks, I would guess. As you can see, she's a good bit bigger and extremely unhappy, so we're going to let her go. Yay! Now, one thing you have to be really careful in the coop is older chickens don't like younger chickens, and they like to peck at them, and they like to scare them. Now, there are a couple things you want to make sure you don't do. Number one is do not have any white light in the coop. If you have your layer lights in um, to facilitate egg laying, turn them off for the first couple of weeks because that will... Um, you know, throw a light on the chicks, and that, that, that does not go well. The chicks need a, a dark corner to hide in, but you need to make sure that corner is not too sharp for the same reasons as in the brooder. They will pile up and suffocate each other. So one thing we always do is we close the bottom nesting boxes, because we've had a number of, ch of chickens die in these boxes just by piling in there. We pile shavings in the corners, uh, just so they can't pile up so, so badly. And we also, uh, you know, look for corners like this. Anywhere where they can pile up, we need to put something there to try and prevent it and not have them, give them a place to really pile up. The other thing, if the adult birds do start pecking at them, as soon as there is blood, get them out of the coop and let them heal. Because once adult chickens see blood, they will go to town. They think it's a smorgasbord, and they will just go crazy and peck the chicken to death in, in a couple of hours. Um, and that covers brooding and how to brood. If you uh, have any questions, leave a comment below. We usually answer within one day. And thanks for watching. It's a little friend. Hello. Am I in the shot? <laughs>